Let's get started on the Lock Patriot. Just like with most rockets, the best place to start with the Lock Patriot is with the, uh, the motor mount. So having a look here, the rocket comes with three centering rings for the motor mount, as well as some instructions to get you started. Now, if you're going to use the uh, provided Z-clips for motor retention, you want to use the, the centering ring with two holes as the aft centering ring. Now, since I'm going to be using a, a flange uh, retainer, I decided to take that centering ring with the holes and put it to the middle, and that way I don't have any unsightly holes in the back centering wing, which would be uh, visible once the rocket is built. Just to show you up close what I've done with the centering rings here is uh, the first thing I did was I set the spacing on the centering rings. Now because I'm going to use that Aeropack retainer, I want the aft centering ring to be flush with the back of the motor mount tube. Otherwise you, need, you may need to space the centering ring up a little ways to account for a, a, a glue-on retainer or if you're using the Z-clips, Lock recommends uh, extending the motor mount a quarter of an inch past the aft centering ring. So what I did was I took the aft centering ring, made sure it was flush with the bottom here, and then I simply took a fin and set the spacing for what would be the middle centering ring. So I did that all the way around to make sure that the middle centering ring was nice and straight. And I uh, glued the, the middle centering ring in place and used some masking tape to hold it in position while it was upright. Same with the top centering ring as well. And now, with the top centering ring, keep in mind that all of the weight of the rocket is going to be supported through the eye bolt here. So leave some extra motor mount tube on the top here so you can make a nice fillet and add some more uh, glue area for strength. Also, just like on my Drago, what I'm planning on doing is inserting the uh, motor mount tube and centering rings into the body tube and then removing the aft centering ring. So that's not actually glued on right now. I'll leave this in position when I put the uh, motor mount into, into place, let that set up, and then I'll remove the aft centering ring, install the fins, and then I'll be able to add uh, internal fillets on the fins. Now that the epoxy on the top half of the uh, centering rings has set, I'm going to remove the masking tape, flip the whole motor mount upside down, and then I can apply another fillet on the centering rings. Now I don't want to apply a fillet where the fins go, so I'm going to leave that uh, blank for now and just remove the masking tape on this one. One thing that I forgot to mention before installing the centering rings on the motor mount tube was I took some fairly uh, coarse sandpaper and went over the glassine layer on the motor mount tube. This allows the epoxy to wick into the actual cardboard and uh, create a much stronger joint versus uh, just gluing it onto the glassine layer. So make sure that you do that before you install your centering rings with epoxy. Now speaking of epoxy, I've added my lower fillet on the upper centering ring. So the last thing that we need to do before installing the motor mount is attach the eye bolt to the top centering ring. Now my favorite attachment method is a U-bolt, however there's nothing wrong with using an eye bolt and it's actually a little bit uh, lighter weight as well, it takes up less room than a U-bolt. So what I'm going to do before uh, adding uh, any glue to the eye bolt to put it in place is I'm going to use some MEK to uh, clean off all the metal to make sure that the, uh, that the glue uh, sets nicely on it. For gluing in the eye bolt permanently I like to use JB Weld, it's a steel reinforced epoxy and it works perfect for metal. Uh, but before I do that, what I want to do is clean the metal parts here, just get any uh, finger oils that might have accumulated off of the metal, and that'll help the JB Weld stick a lot better. For that, I use MEK, which is a methyl ethyl ketone, and uh, when you use it, you just want to glove up. It's kind of a nasty substance here. It's a very powerful cleaner. The nice thing is, though, it, uh, it dries really quick. It evaporates quickly after you use it. So, I'm just going to run some MEK over the metal parts here. Let them sit for a few minutes, and they'll be dry by the time that I get the JB Weld all mixed up. Okay, all the metal parts have been cleaned, and I've mixed up my JB Weld. So let's put the eye bolt in place here. First thing I'm going to do is uh, add some JB Weld to the threads on the eye bolt. Just like so. And I'm going to run the upper nut into place. This starts getting pretty messy with, uh, with the JB Weld going everywhere, so make sure that you have some paper towels handy when you start doing this work. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit more JB Weld. A little bit to the bottom of the nut here. I'm going to put the washer on. Just kind of twist that around. Now there's a lot of twisting force that uh, happens on the rocket if you're not running a swivel. So with a single eye bolt like this, you want to make sure that the, uh, the bolt is properly secured. 
I'm going to put that in position. Add a little bit more JV Weld to the washer here. There we go. Now some JB Weld to the bottom threads. And we'll get this bottom nut in position here. When you use JB Weld like this, there's no need for a lock washer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the eye bolt in place. And what I don't want is to have it be parallel to the outside edge of the, the body tube here. I want to give it a little bit of an angle. This makes it easier for me to reach in and uh, thread the shock cord into position here. You don't want it to uh, interfere with the motor which might come out and you don't want it to interfere with the body tube itself. But a little bit of an angle certainly helps when you're uh, setting up the recovery system here. So I'll just hold that in place. We'll tighten everything down. And then I'm going to do one more thing with the JV Weld. Just going to double check that the eye bolt doesn't interfere either with the inside diameter or the outside diameter. And I'm going to add a little bit of JB Weld to the open part of the eye. Now, if you want, you can uh, upgrade yourself to a forged eye bolt that doesn't have this opening here. But this eye bolt will be just fine. A little bit of uh, JB Weld there will kind of help take some of the strain off and prevent it from opening up more. There we go. With that all in place here, I'm just going to slowly and carefully go over any extra JB Weld that might be on the eye bolt here. And make sure that uh, any JB Weld is smooth, because JB Weld drives very hard, of course, and so you don't want any sharp points that might uh, rub on your shock cord and eventually cause it to fail. Okay, with a little bit of work, the eye bolt is in place here, and I've used enough JB Weld to fill the gap in the eye and just smooth everything out. And be sure to keep your MEK handy uh, after you do this because you'll probably want to clean the JB Weld off of your wrench after you tighten down the nut. Uh, but uh, we'll let this uh, assembly sit here and dry up and we'll get to work on the fins and the body tube. Let's have a look at the fins of the Lock Precision Patriot. These are laser cut quarter inch plywood. Seem to be very sturdy so I'm really happy with that. Uh, what I'm going to do before installing them is I'm going to fill in the wood grain using a, a putty filler. So what I don't want to do is get the putty filler where epoxy is going to go later. So I've uh, created a line right here. This is a little bit higher than the, than the fin to body tube joint to allow for some room for the fillets to go. So I've just uh, drawn a line there. I'm going to add some tape on the root side of the fin. That will help keep the putty out of the area where the epoxy is going to go. So I'm just going to lay the tape down and I'm going to do this for all the fins. We'll get the putty on the fins and get that drying. Let's talk about filling the wood grain and the wood fins here. Now this is a step that you definitely don't have to do if you want to just build and fly and enjoy this rocket. However, I find it doesn't take too much effort to fill in the wood grain and when you're done painting the rocket it really looks great not having that wood grain to look at. There are many, many different ways to fill in wood grain. This is the method that I found works pretty well for me. It's a fairly low, uh, low effort required to do it. Just takes uh, one step to do and uh, in the end the fins look great. So this is what works for me. Let's have a look. Okay, on this project I'm going to use the Midwax Color Changing Wood Filler. This uh, filler is pink when you first lay it on and as it dries out it's going to change into a natural wood color. So that'll tell me when it's okay to, to sand the material. So I'm just going to mix it up a bit here. The instructions do recommend uh, not, uh, not having skin contact with this material. So I'm just going to spread it out using a popsicle stick. And then I've got my plastic spreader here to get it all over the fin. Now the nice thing about this filler being pink right now is that it's easier to tell versus a standard wood color when I've got the entire fin all covered in this material here. So just a little bit of elbow grease. We'll get this filler covering the fin. And we're going to do the rest of the fins. We're going to let it all dry out and then we're going to sand it smooth. Okay, that looks like a good putty application for this fin here. 
You want full coverage on the fin, however you don't want to lay it on too thick because remember everything that you put on you're going to be sanding almost all of it back off. So what I'm going to do is do the, the rest of the fins on one side. We're going to let them dry for a little bit and because we're introducing some moisture to the plywood what I want to do is uh, let them dry for just a little bit. Then I'm going to flip all the fins over and do the other sides as well. That way we can introduce the same amount of moisture on both sides of the fins and uh, make sure that they don't warp at all while the uh, putty is drying. Here's all four fins with the putty applied. As you can see there's uh, putty on both sides of the fins. I'm going to allow that to dry for a while and since it's kind of cold in the garage it might take a little while for that to happen so I'm going to move on to uh, doing the body tube spirals. Let's talk about tube spirals for a minute. Pretty much any cardboard rocket you're going to get will have uh, spiral indentations on the outside uh, of the body tube. Whether you fill them or not is up to you, but I think most of us can agree it's probably the most miserable part about building a rocket. With that said, let's just get on with it. To fill the tube spirals on the lock body tubes, I'm going to use the same material that I used on the fins. Be using the, the Minwax wood filler. Now, of course, unlike the, uh, the fins where I'm spreading the filler across the entire surface, I'm just going to focus on trying to get the filler into the tube spirals. Now, there's uh, two different uh, uh, spirals that you can see here on the body tube. You got the darker one here, and then between the two darker spirals, there's uh, just a very light uh, indentation that I can feel with my fingertip as I, as I run it over. And I know that if you can feel it while you're moving your finger over it, you'll be able to see it after you paint. So even though it's twice as much work, I'm going to run filler through the big spiral and through the smaller spiral. And of course, if you don't want to fill the spiral, that's totally fine too. No one's going to see the spiral when the rocket is 200 feet away on a pad ready to go up on a K-motor. However, when it's in the camp and you're checking it out and checking out other people's rockets, it's always nice to see the extra effort that they put into making the rocket look nice and smooth. So let's get started. I'm just going to start with uh, the edge of the body tube here. As you can see, I've gloved up on one hand here in case I need to use my finger to, to help work that uh, the putty into the tube. Here we go. So I'm just going to work a little bit by a little bit here. Kind of alternate between using my, my finger and the spreader and the popsicle stick. And just go over and over. And what I'm doing now, it's not going to create a 100% perfect spiral fill, but it's going to look a lot better than not doing anything. And there's there's no other way to do this really, in my opinion. It just takes a lot of work, time and effort to, uh, to fill in these, these spirals. But if you can get the, the spirals filled as well as you can while removing as much of the putty from the outside as you can, it'll definitely help in sanding the body tube. So I let the fins dry overnight, came back out to the garage this morning and found that the Midwax wood filler had lived up to its promises. It has changed color from pink into a natural wood color, letting me know that the filler is ready for sanding at this time. A couple of different ways to sand this down. One is through a hand sander, sanding block, works great. A little bit of elbow grease. But if you want to get the job done a little bit quicker, I highly recommend an orbital sander. I put 180 grit on this orbital sander, so I'll get to work sanding these uh, fins down. We'll remove the masking tape as well, and then the fins will be ready for beveling, then installation. While the orbital sander works great for sanding the fins, it's always a good idea to use eye and uh, breathing protection for all the dust that you're going to create. Just like that, one side of the fin is done. I'll flip it over to the other side, sand that, then three more fins to go. Pretty straightforward. Okay, that was the last fin all sanded up. I can tell it's much smoother than it was before I started this process. That's all four fins taken care of. So now we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to uh, beveling and final sanding and then we'll be ready to install them. Just like with filling tube spirals or setting up an avionics bay, there are a number of ways to bevel a fin. What I'm going to show you is a method that works pretty well for me using a, a tabletop belt sander. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a standoff to offset the fin from the front of the belt sander. Then I simply push the uh, leading edge of the fin onto the belt sander and that will give me a nice consistent bevel on both sides of each fin. So here's the standoff that I've come up with for my belt sander here. I simply took a straight edge 
and clamped it to the side. What this will do is this will give me a consistent standoff for placing the fin against the belt sander. And so when I align the leading edge straight with the, uh, with the belt and place the rear corner of the fin against the standoff, this will give me the same standoff distance when I do every single fin. Now these fins are five ply plywood, so I'm simply going to watch the ply as I, as I sand the bevel into the fin and check each side for consistency. This, uh, this should give me the same angle on both sides of the fin and take me right to that last ply. Now, I'm not going to create a knife edge at the leading edge because I, I want to have a, a durable fin on the leading edge for, for transport. So I'm just going to take it to that last ply and then I'll do slight rounding on the leading edge uh, on that last little bit. So let's get started. Here's the first fin done. As you can see, I sanded a nice bevel on the leading edge of it. It's still not a knife edge. There's one ply of plywood uh, left here on the leading edge, and I'll simply round the corners here when I get to final sanding. But one fin down, three to go, and then these will be ready for final sanding and installation. One last thing I want to do with the fins before installation is break all the sharp edges and corners on these fins. To do that, I'm just going to use a sanding block with 180 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to go over all the corners just very lightly. Just break the edges a little bit here. I don't like having sharp corners on my fins as I feel that makes it easier for the paint to chip off. So just reduce those sharp spots. You don't have to round the edges. But just take care of that sharpness on the corner. Make it so if you rub your hand up and down on it, you're not going to cut your fingers. Also, don't forget, just go over the gluing surface here. Make sure you've taken care of all any burrs, any issues that might prevent the fin from sitting all the way down on the body tube. And then one last thing, almost the most important thing, is on the bottom corners, I just sand a little tiny nub off right here. This will help uh, account for any uh, uh, glue bead that might have uh, built up on the centering ring. So, one on the front, one on the back, and uh, one just final sand here. And these fins are ready to be installed. The putty's dried on the body tube, so it's time to get sanding on it. Now, cardboard is obviously not as strong as quarter inch plywood. So to sand down the putty on the body tube, I'm just gonna use my hand sander here. This has 180 grit sandpaper on it, and there's not much to say other than it just takes some elbow grease and uh, some patience and time to get to it. So I'm gonna get started on this. It'll take some time to get this look in the way I want, but uh, when I'm done, I'll be uh, ready to, to move on with construction. That is, after I do the second body tube. So that's it for this week. So far we've uh, built the motor mount assembly, we've gotten the fins ready for installation, and we've started uh, work on uh, filling the body tube spirals on the body tubes. When I come back next week, we'll finish taking care of the body tube spirals, we'll get the motor mount and the fins installed. We'll see you then. spirals.